Hi everybody, my name is Tom. My name is Kat. And my name's Katie. And welcome to the, the Couch, Couch Potato, Potato Lab. Lab. The show where we bring the science uh, to you. So uh, now that we have tried a, a couple more episodes, we just like to remind everyone who, by the way, thank you for watching. Uh, we're just reminding everyone that we are now five days a week. That's right, we are Monday to Friday doing live streams uh, for your viewing pleasure. So remember to go on in five days a week. That's Woo. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Woo Very yeah. exciting. We're, we're doing it, people. Uh, so today's activity can be found on our blog. Uh, it's also in the link below this right here. Uh, there it is, lab manual, bit.ly backslash couch potato lab. That is bit.ly backslash couch potato lab. So uh, go ahead and download it. Make sure you have all the materials ready. Uh, I think because we have a really, really good episode today. We hey? have a great episode. All Just right. letting you know the chemistry is going to be heated in this room. Whoa, Whoa. Mm -hmm. what a zinger. Uh, <laughs> All right, so uh, with me here uh, are two wonderful scientists. So why don't we start to my left uh, and let's get ourselves introduced. Hello, my name is Kat and my prona pronouns are she, her. And a fun fact about me is I love to play flag football. It's my oh. favorite sport. Oh. That's yes. a good one. I like scoring touchdowns, mm -hmm. throwing touchdowns, miss the sport. Don't have to be tackled? <laughs> no. No. Fantastic. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, I'm your host for today, Tom. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, and a fun fact about me is, uh, you know, I, I like to snowboard with skis. Uh, some people call it skiing, but, uh, you know, it's a potato potato thing. That's that's right. it. That's it. For sure. And is it all downhill skiing or is it like cross uphill. country? Uphill. Uphill, uphill skiing. Wow. Okay. Uphill skiing. Mm -hmm. uh, snowboarding. Right. Uh, who do we got to my right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So hello, everybody. My name is Katie. My pronouns are she, her. And a fun fact about me is that when I was little, I had a shark. I had the shark uh, with a whole bunch of other fish in a fish tank. And the shark got hungry and ate all the other fish. Uh, what kind of shark was it, Katie? It was... I don't actually know. It was just like I it was like some little shark. It wasn't even that big. So we little shark. we went on vacation and it got hungry and it wasn't fed enough and so it ate all the fish and it was a really sad day for us. Well wow. yeah. uh this one goes out to all the shark owners. Uh yeah. <laughs> all right. For sure. Uh but before we start the show, we first just wanted to take an opportunity to acknowledge that Eyes and this live stream is operating on Treaty Four land, which is the traditional territory of the Naya Walk. Nakaway, Dakota, Nakota, and Lakota peoples, as well as the traditional homeland of the Métis Michif Nation. We are grateful to have an audience that is diverse. You may be watching this live stream from other number treaties or from unceded land as well. So thank you for taking an opportunity to recognize that with us. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. So friends, to start things off, um, our first reaction that I want to do, um, it takes a little bit of time, so I just want to set it up now. But does anyone know what a reaction is? What a reaction is? Like, are you talking about, like, if I buy, like, a whole bunch of, like, chocolate bars or something, and then I go downstairs and find that my dad ate all my chocolate bars, and I get, like, I blow up and I Whoa. have a big reaction? Is that, like, what That's you're talking about, That's a very Kat? specific example, Katie, mm. let me just say. But is that what a reaction is? That might be an emotional reaction, but here we're talking about chemical reactions. So a chemical reaction is when you have one or more substances or reactants that change into one or more new substances or products. So... For this demo, I have two bottles here. You can see it's labeled number one and number two. So in number one, I have three teaspoons of yeast and two teaspoons of sugar. And then bottle number two, I only have two teaspoons of yeast and one and a third teaspoon of sugar. And the next step for this is I'm going to add half a cup of warm water to each bottle. So what is that showing, Kat? What, what are you doing right there? Well, right now, I'm just mixing up my my products or my reactants but if you want to find out what happens you'll have to stay tuned to later in the episode where we explore that perfect you know what we could do is we could have viewers maybe send in their hypotheses as to what will happen or their guesses so if you want to take a guess what will happen then maybe send them in text us in or message us and 
Let's get some guesses going. Absolutely. That's a great idea, Katie. Uh, you can reach us uh, on our social. Uh, our tags are at Eyes Youth. That works for YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. But we also have a, a cool little phone number here, 100% real. It's 306-570-1013. That phone number, again, is right below me, 306-570-1013. One, three. Text us in your questions. Uh, text us in your creations for today. We, we want to see it. We, we want to enjoy the science around us. Wonderful. Kat, what you doing over there? So the next step I did after adding that warm water, I just gave the bottles a little swish, you know, mix everything up. And then Katie's favorite thing in the world, balloons. <laughs> I'm placing a balloon over the open bottle lid. So All we're right. going to let these sit. I'll just leave them... Maybe I'll just leave them right here at the corner of the desk so Sweet. we can watch and see what happens as the stream goes on. Cool. Sounds wonderful. So yeah, uh, let us know what do you think is going to happen. What is your hypothesis or educated guess as to what's going to happen with those two balloons? One of them has more sugar than the other, uh, and we're going to see uh, what that's all about. So uh, we were talking about uh, chemical reactions, right? So. Uh, a really big part of it is understanding the rate of reaction. Am I am I correct? I would say you are correct in that. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think so. So, what exactly is a rate of reaction? Well, uh, to put it plainly, it is how fast a reaction occurs, how fast something goes from products or from reactants, sorry, to products. And there's so many things uh, that can change that affect this rate of reaction, and we'll get into them in a little bit. Uh, but to sort of introduce this concept of a rate, uh, did everybody bring uh, their potato chips? Oh, yeah, yes, I have I'm them right so back here. I'm so hungry. Yeah. I'm yeah, so yeah, yeah. happy we got to this part. Uh, here at Eyes, we're always packing potatoes. Uh, you never know when we're going to need them, like today. Uh, so let's, let's, uh, let's do a, like a, a more of a demo kind of thing. Uh, Kat, I want you to crush those potato chips really, really fast. I know that you uh, did some speed boxing back in your day, yes, right? Either, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to crush mine at a medium pace, like a nice little maybe 120 beats per minute. Mm -hmm. You know, got that internal metronome. Uh, Katie, I would like you to crush them very, very slowly. And okay. for those of you that enjoy ASMR, uh, <laughs> here you go. Three, two, one. And stop. All right. Uh, let's start with Cat over here. Uh, well, what you got, Cat? I mean, I don't think I would want to eat these chips now, but I've I've got them pretty pretty crushed up with how fast I was going there. That's just right. Karate chopping them really really fast. Looks yeah. like a nice little cereal you got going on there. I guess you could do that. Maybe like a, a breading for some food mm. later. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, well, what I have here is I have some whole chips here. Uh, but I also have a little bit of crumbs, so it's kind of like uh, half of cats, you know. We got some crumbs, so we still got some whole chips. And I was going uh, a little bit slower than her. Remember that 120 BPM. Just a nice little, you know. Uh, so that was a medium rate. But what do we got here, Katie? Well, if you want to take a look at my bag over here, you can actually see that my chips are not really crumpled at all. So they, a lot of them are still in whole pieces. I got some little crumbs here, but essentially when Tom told us to stop, I was still trying to go for it so i was going at a slow pace and it didn't really do much to our reaction all right so wh what does this tell us about the rates of a reaction well i went fast mm -hmm. and i got more chips crushed in that time mm -hmm. so maybe if we want a reaction to take place faster we need those reactants to react faster together right absolutely uh, and we have things that can make that react faster. And we'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, but for now, uh, you, before the show started, uh, we were talking about our good friend, uh, who is not a human, by the way. Uh, what, what, what were they? What were they? Effie. Effie. Effie, right. Our Effie good the friend elephant. Effie. Effie is very special to us because Effie is an elephant. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you don't know who Effie is or where she was introduced in the show, go check out last or yesterday's episode because that's when we introduced Effie the elephant. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We really, we really love Effie, but Effie's breath smells pretty bad. 
Awful. Yeah, it does. I, w- I wasn't going to tell you that, but I think it's good that you realize that. Yeah, you yeah. know, Effie hasn't been able to go to the dentist lately, but I think it's time maybe maybe we should make Effie some toothpaste. What do you think? You know I what? I love that idea. I think that's a great idea, Kat. And thankfully, I brought some materials for us to make Effie some toothpaste, if you want to partake in this. Yes, I, I definitely think we should do that. Perfect. Yeah. All right, so what do, what do we got over here? All right, so if you want to follow along at home, here's the chance to do it. So the first thing that we are going to do is uh, Kat and I already, ha- already have this sitting down for a while just because we wanted to kind of get going with our experiment. But... Uh, you are going to want to take one tablespoon of yeast, okay? And then you are going to want to add two tablespoons of warm water to this yeast, okay? And then you want to make sure you let it sit for about five-ish minutes. And that is just so the water and the yeast can kind of um, sit together and that it can be soaked in by the water. So ours have been sitting around for five minutes, but we're just going to leave it, uh, set it on the table for now. So uh, get that mixture ready. And then we are going to actually grab a, another cup and we are going to uh, add some other ingredients to it, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a question here. Uh, what is yeast? Does anybody know? I can take this one. Okay. Uh, so yeast is actually a living thing. Uh, it's, it's a single-celled organism, uh, but it's not like a bacteria. Uh, but it, it, it's more like a, it's more like what we are. It's closer to us than it is a bacteria, even though it only has one cell. Uh, but it's a living thing. So when uh, you know your parents are making that sourdough, remember uh, you you gotta feed your starter because you're actually feeding a living thing. And that's why you'll notice uh, when you uh, add some water to your yeast, it's gonna start bubbling, and that's actually the yeast uh, metabolizing uh, and getting going, getting activated, is what we like to call it. Uh, Yeah, sorry, continue. Yeah, no, thanks, Tom. That's awesome. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take our other cup and we are going to start adding some other ingredients into this cup, okay? So we are going to take hydrogen peroxide and we are going to add a quarter cup of hydrogen peroxide to our cup right here. So I'm going to just pour this right in. We have another very good question here. Sorry. Uh, can we use hot water or cold water for the yeast? So for the yeast, when you're getting your yeast starter ready, you actually want to use warm water. You don't want to use too hot of water or else it could actually kill the yeast because as Tom said, yeast is actually a living organism. So you want it um, on the warm side. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yeah. All right, so I am done with the hydrogen peroxide. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to add two tablespoons of uh, dish soap now. So you want to grab the tablespoon and you want to grab your dish soap and you want to go ahead and pour two tablespoons of it right into your hydrogen peroxide. So there we go. There's one. It's going to turn a nice blue color because we have blue dish soap, but (laughs) whatever dish soap you have should work perfectly perfect and there is two wonderful all right and the last thing we are going to do with our second cup is we are going to add three drops of food coloring so whatever color you you color you have I like to think of toothpaste as blue my Mm. toothpaste Mm. at home is blue so I'm gonna go with blue Uh, what color are you using Kat I just decided to go with red, one of my favorite colors. Perfect. Sounds good. All right, so we're just going to drop three little droplets into here. And let us know what color uh, you decided because, remember, uh, toothpaste toothpaste is like snowflakes. Uh, you know, no two toothpastes are the exact same, so we really want to see uh, what you come up with. And, again, you can tweet at us uh, at Eyes Youth using the caption – or. Hashtag Couch Potato Lab. Again, that is the hashtag Couch Potato Lab. We want to see your beautiful elephant's toothpaste. Perfect. Awesome. So uh, I just have a question here, guys. So, I mean, my toothpaste comes in a nice little squeezable bottle Mm -hmm. that I could fit in my pocket. But Mm -hmm. do you think this elephant's toothpaste is going to fit in that nice little bottle? Like, how big is this going to get? 
You know what? I've seen Elephant's Tooth Face before, and it gets pretty big. So I think we might want to put our second cup in a container just to, you know, avoid any kind of mess and make things easy for us to clean up Great. in case it gets too big. That mm -hmm. sounds good. Safety first. I love it. I love it. We're very safe here at the uh, Couch Potato Lab. All right. So if you want to grab any container, uh, we made ours clear just so that you can kind of see a little bit better at home. But any uh, container will work for this as long as it's big enough to fit your cup or your bottle or whatever you're using for your reaction. All right. All right. So uh, I think that we're ready to make our toothpaste now. So I think what we're going to do is I am going to go first. We're going to watch my reaction. We're going to kind of do some uh, reflective thoughts. Then we're going to take a look at cats, see if it's the same. All right. Now, uh, every good scientist uh, needs a hypothesis. Yes. Remember, That's we right. got that got that educated guess. Yeah. So uh, what do you think is going to happen with mm. yours, Katie? OK, well, with mine, I made sure to uh, swirl it really well and mm -hmm. I made sure to use very warm water. So I think that mine is going to overflow. Going to overflow. I, I really think it's just going to kind of bubble up and it's just going to go all over the table here. And, and, and Kat, what do you think is going to happen to yours? You know, I think I've seen people make elephant's toothpaste before, mm -hmm. and I've seen it get pretty big. So I think, I think it's going to fill up the whole studio. The whole studio. I think we're going to be out of here. I think this whole place is going to be filled with toothpaste. Well, right. at least Effie is going to have good hygiene after that then. Mm -hmm. You got the camera crew sweating over here. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. All right, guys. Are we ready? Yeah. Here we, we go. Drum roll? We should do a drum roll. Yeah. I definitely think so. Ready? Oh. Oh, I can see something happening. Oh. Look at that. It's it's rising. Can't even finish this. Look. Oh, wow. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, there's still some powdered yeast in there. Oh, boy. Huh. Look at that. Oh, I think it's almost spilling over. It looks like uh, when you when you uh, have like you know a slushy or something, and then you put vanilla ice cream in it. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. Look Those at that, guys. I think you can kind of see it a little bit. There we go. So <laughs> as wonderful as this looks, and it actually does look a little bit appetizing, it's very important that we do not eat science. So this is wonderful and all. You can feel free to take pictures, and if you want. Without touching it, you can kind of even put your hand up close uh, and you can actually feel that it's a little bit warm. Uh, this reaction is a little bit warm and that's because it's an exothermic reaction, which means that heat is released from this reaction. So make sure you're not eating it, but you can kind of put your hand a little bit close to it and feel that heat. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. All right. Are we ready to try my toothpaste? All right. Let's bring it on over to Kat. All right. Let's see how this goes. Let's get some yeast in here. I'm going to give my cup a little bit of a swirl, too. Yeah. Oh, I can see it. Oh, that's a really pretty color. Oh. Is it? So it's a little bit. A little bit. It's not oh. quite the whole studio. I, I, yeah, I know? guess yeah. my hypothesis wasn't correct, but I that's okay. That's science. We'll, we test, we try, and we come back. You know, that's wonderful. Uh, technically, it is in the studio. That is right. So, you know... Uh, I'll give you I'll give you a star for that. How about ah, that? That's Thank just you. one of the amazing things. You know, we we did not do it exactly uh, the same and look at the very different result. But I think that it's still a really cool experiment. So remember to send in those pictures. We would really like to see them. Yeah. Uh, so cats didn't really uh, take off as well as Katie's. Katie, did you have some sort of a special ingredient? Did you talk to it nicely? Did what did you do? You know what? I. Uh, I am not really sure. I mean, I made sure to add kind of the proper amount of water. I remember that, uh, Kat, you were saying that maybe you didn't get enough water into the yeast before the show. So maybe that was it. Maybe it was the blue food coloring. Hmm. Right. So yeah. that's another thing with experiments is we never know uh, when uh, what ex what ingredient kind of impacts what and so it could be that blue food coloring that is making the reaction better than the red food coloring mm. Mm. Uh, and and cat just going back to you why do you think yours didn't work as well do you think it's the blue food coloring or do you think it's something uh else i think maybe maybe i talked it up too much i put too much pressure on my elephant's toothpaste and it just <laughs> couldn't perform but it's interesting that we use we tried to use the same ingredients 
and the same uh, ratios, mm -hmm. but the rate that our reaction took place at was different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if if we were to have timed this, obviously uh, Katie's would have been a lot faster, and and Cat's would have been a lot slower. So the rates uh, are very different. Uh, and you know what? There, th there's just been this word on my mind. You know, yeah. uh, mm. every time I say your name, Cat. Yeah. Uh, I think of this word. Uh, it's it's not it's not the word cat. It's actually catalyst. 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 I've heard that word before. Yeah. Mm. What, what what's a catalyst, Cat? Isn't a catalyst something that can speed up a chemical reaction? You're absolutely right. And uh, do you think that there is uh, one of those nifty catalysts in this reaction? Maybe. I think so. And you know what? I, I came a little prepared. I did some research <laughs> before. Good. And I do think it's the yeast that mm -hmm. is the catalyst in this reaction. And so that's why it was so important to add the proper amount of yeast and to add the appropriate amount of water in order for the yeast to speed up this chemical reaction. Mm, I like your thinking. Uh, people at home, if you have any idea what you think the catalyst could be, because I really love Katie's explanation, but maybe it's the dish soap, maybe it's the hot water, uh, please let us know what you think the catalyst is. Maybe, you know, tinker around with the, uh, with the amount of yeast that you add, maybe the amount of water, the amount of dye. You never know, because it could uh, make the reaction more violent or more subdued. So again, there's our number, 306-570-1013. Feel free to call us up. Uh, and use our social at Eyes Youth on all of those wonderful social media platforms. Perfect. So before we kind of moved on, just wanted to mention that in our reaction, we now have uh, oxygen and water because we broke down the hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. So this is actually okay to pour down the sink. Okay. So just make sure to drain it with lots of water, but it is a okay to pour down the sink. All right. Thank you, Katie. So, Tom, mm -hmm. you seem like you're pretty pretty smart about all these things about yeah. rates of reactions. Do you? Whoa, my cup is going <laughs> a bit more now. It's speeding up. Oh. But you've been talking a lot about rates of reactions, and did you know anything else about that that you could share with us? Uh, I've been waiting my whole life for someone to ask me about the rates of reaction. In fact, uh, I have. Uh, Five things right here, actually. Oh, uh, wonderful! On this wow. wonderful, on this wonderful board. I'm not sure if people at home can see it. Uh, maybe if I uh, lean it, lean it a little down. Lean it. Yeah. Uh, there we go. There oh, we go. Perfect. Thank you, perfect. camera crew. Uh, all right. So we got five things that affect uh, the reaction rates. The first thing is concentration. Now, concentration just means uh, how many uh, particles of that reactant are in it. So uh, let's say, uh, you know, baking soda and vinegar. If you have maybe this much baking soda and this much vinegar, uh, it's going to be a very slow and very uh, non-eventful reaction. But if you have uh, more of each, you know, it's going to be a quicker reaction. So that's going to speed it up. So uh, the other one is temperature. Faster reactions generally uh, occur uh, when they are heated. So like boiling water, uh, you know, you got to add heat to boil water, uh, all those wonderful things. So temperature, the, uh, the higher heat, the faster the reaction is going to go. Surface area, that's like, uh, you know, I drew a mountain here and I drew a pile of dirt. Uh, so mountains are made out of solid rock, right? Uh, so the surface area is going to be less than those of the dirt because dirt is all these teeny tiny little particles uh, that are just everywhere. So there's going to be more surface area and generally more surface area means a faster reaction. Uh, and then down here, with catalysts. Yes, we were talking about them. It's kind of like a lock and key model. You know, it needs to, you know, it speeds up the reaction. It helps it go faster, even if it's not technically in the reaction, right? It just mm -hmm. speeds it up. And the last thing is a solvent. Uh, a solvent, that's just something that dissolves a substance. So that can be like, uh, you know how, m you know, a previous episode, we added mustard uh, to oil and water and that as an emulsifier, but also kind of, uh, you know, blended the two. It kind of uh, dissolved it, uh, not really dissolved it, but do you know what I mean? Uh, if you don't know what I mean, please say, Tom, I don't know what you mean. Please explain solvents a little bit better uh, on our social media. All right. So my time is up.
What Perfect. do we got? Well, you know what, Tom? Uh, you said that you've kind of been preparing for this moment your entire life, right? Mm -hmm. So I have also been preparing this moment for my entire life. Perfect. But I do have one experiment that I am very excited to show you guys. And I want to kind of turn this into a little game. So I want to see if you guys can uh, kind of take a guess as to which of the five factors you think is operating in this game. All right. Should we play? I, yeah, I love I'm ready. Game. Perfect. All right, guys. So you can follow along if you want. If you don't have uh, what we need to follow along, then that is totally fine. Just uh, be ready to watch here. So here I have two cups of water. OK, so uh, this cup right here is hot water and this cup right here is cold water. OK, so mm -hmm. hot and cold water. So what I am going to do in this experiment is I am going to take two Alka-Seltzer tablets. And these tablets, uh, sometimes if you have an upset stomach or maybe one of your family members has an upset stomach, they may take one of these tablets just to kind of uh, make them feel a bit better, okay? So this is a very important thing that we can use in many chemical reactions. So what I am going to do is I am going to drop one Alka-Seltzer tablet into the hot water and I'm going to drop the other Alka-Seltzer tablet into the cold water, okay? Mm. So uh, I, I, I want to hear from you guys. Like, what do you think will happen when I drop it mm. into the hot versus the cold water? Tom? Well, you know, I, I was just talking about things that affect our rate of reaction, and uh, we know that temperature is something that greatly affects this. Uh, so I say the hot water might make it react a little bit faster than the cold water because you know we we didn't uh, bring our uh, thermometer. That's the word that I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh, so we can't actually tell the big of a difference in temperature. So I'm going to say just like a little, a little bit. All right. Know? Good guess. Yeah. What do you think, Kat? My hypothesis. I think based off what we learned from Tom, um, and based off the fact that I made cookies last night. And I think I cooked them too long at too hot mm. and they got burnt. So mm. I'm going to agree with Tom and my hypothesis that the warmer water will react faster with the Alka-Seltzer tab. Sweet. Okay. Thanks, guys, for the guesses. Let's take a look at the experiment now. Let's see what we're going to see, okay? Uh, maybe let's see if we can get a close-up on these cups here, and then we'll be able to really see. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So remember, this is the warm water, and this is the cold water. So I'm going to drop them in. In three, two, one. Huh. <laughs> well, wow. uh, the, the hot water one looks like a jacuzzi. Yeah, it, it does. Like that really looks like a nice jacuzzi. Versus the cold water one, you can see some bubbles there, but you really don't see a lot of action happening versus this one, the Alka-Seltzer tablet. And I'm not sure if you can hear, but it's 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 really sizzling uh, a lot compared to the cold water one. So we can see that the cold water one really did not have uh, as many bubbles, did not react as fast as the hot water one. The hot water one, the tablet is actually completely gone versus the cold water one, it is still going. So uh, yeah, you, if you want to send in your thoughts, send in your questions about this experiment, send in what you think what of the five factors it is, please let us know. Yeah. Uh, Kat, you were saying you were, you were doing some baking last night, hey? Yes, I was doing some baking. Yeah. It, you know, it didn't turn out, but I have, um, similar to Katie, I want to test out and see at home if you can guess which factor I'm going to test out here. So. I went into my little brother's sidewalk chalk supply mm. and I was able to borrow. I have a big piece of chalk and then I went and grinded up one of the pieces of chalk. And then I have some vinegar here. And I want to add the vinegar to both beakers. Now, could both of you, wha mm. what would your hypothesis be about what might happen when I add the vinegar? Uh, I'm going to throw this one to Katie first. All right. Well, uh, that's really that's a really good question. You know what? I think that perhaps the one that is ground up will react faster uh, because I just keep thinking of Tom's analogy with the mountain versus the dirt. I think that maybe that one is kind of going to uh, bubble up more and kind of use that vinegar, react with that vinegar more. But I am also curious to see if the purple versus the green color will affect that because we never know. It's kind of like that food coloring thing again, guys. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. And Tom, uh, what's your thoughts? You know, I'm going to hypothesize 
that, uh, you know, because we, we all know baking soda and vinegar, like it's a classic, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an institution in the home science world, but I've never heard of, you know, chalk and vinegar, you know, that, that's not delicious. Uh, so I'm going to say that, uh, you know, there's going to be no reaction from either because they're incompatible. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Wow, so two very different, bold hypotheses. Mm -hmm. So now we'll add the vinegar, vinegar and we'll see what happens. So we're adding to the large one first, and then now I'll add to the ground up chalk. Oh, wow. So we, we got some bubbles on, on, the, on the green one. Oh yeah, it's, it's kind of like the Alka-Seltzer. Yes, yeah. and similar to the Alka-Seltzer, there is some fizzing. It's harder to see um, with the purple chalk here that's all ground up, but um, there is fizzing and you can actually hear some of it too. And then in the larger green piece, you can see it's not fizzing up quite as much. It hasn't um, had quite the same reaction rate mm -hmm. as the ground up. So yeah. at home, if you want to guess which factor we were testing there. So the factors are temperature, uh, surface area, uh, concentration, solvent, and catalyst. Yeah, so uh, let us know. There's our hashtag right there, hashtag Couch Potato Lab, if you want to reach us on Twitter. Uh, everything else is just at Eyes Youth. Feel free to let us know. Uh, thank you, Kat, for that wonderful demonstration. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> looks great. So uh, I, I said before, uh, you know, there is something about the way that the molecules interact, and that's really uh, what we call collision theory. Are, are you all familiar with collision theory? Collision? Like running into each other? like Yeah, like, like you that? know when, when you're at the, the fair and then you're on the bumper cars mm. and then you just like go and ram your friend into the wall, like that sort of collision? Yeah, Katie, and that's, uh, that's why I don't go bumper carting with you anymore. Yeah, well, yeah. there was that one incident, but we're not going to talk about there that. There was that one incident, uh, and we'll never talk about it again. <laughs> uh, yeah, so collision theory. Uh, this is a, uh, a chemical theory. You know, we're going to go back to my handy-dandy whiteboard uh, just right here. On the other side, oh Lord. <laughs> okay. Perfect. There we go. All right. So you're saying y you got a circle and a moon and a circle and a sideways couch. <laughs> uh, what's going on here? Well, uh, you know, someone asked, what's the lock and key model when it comes to catalysts? And this can actually be explained uh, with collision theory. Basically, uh, in order for a chemical reaction to occur, they actually need to interact because in a space, all the molecules are just going every which way, you know, but they need to hit each other in the right orientation. That's what we call it, orientation. So as you can see, um, we have a little circle here, and it's going to connect with this moon shape, and it's going to make, you know, a another molecule because it's correctly orientated. It's like a lock and key. The lock has to fit the key. Now, this one's not going to occur because uh, this molecule right here uh, it's not the exact same shape as this other one, so it's not going to occur. And again, uh, the other stuff like temperature and all that other stuff, it helps uh, with the reaction because there's going to be more collisions. There's going to be, uh, for concentration maybe, there's going to be more molecules, which means a greater chance that things will react. And that is collision theory so so Tom are you saying you know when I have been stuck at home I've been doing a lot of jigsaw puzzles mm. so are you saying that it's something like that like whenever I try to fit a piece that doesn't work then it's kind of like that it is exactly like that so that's a great analogy Katie a puzzle is just a, a picture right that you got to build and if you, you put two pieces even if you force the two pieces together it's not going to make the right picture right it's not going to it's not going to work so you got to make sure that your puzzle pieces fit together just like so not Wonderful. like that collision theory awesome wow well thanks tom hey you know what this has been an amazing show already uh but i have been kind of distracted here and uh, one of the things that's distracting me is cat's experiment from the beginning i just i can't get it off my mind i keep thinking about it you know i've been thinking about it a lot too but i think do you think we should call in a friend to maybe talk about it absolutely i think i love know, that i heard natalie is an expert on this kind of experiment, right? Yeah, she's I a fermentation expert. She is. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think it's time that we bring out our great friend, Natalie? I think it's I time, think so. Tom. I think it's time. Hey, Ready? hey, Nat. Are you there? 
here I am. All right. Oh, Everybody, Natalie. welcome Natalie Nat. to the show. This is her first appearance hello, on the Couch hello. Potato Lab. Welcome, Welcome, Natalie. Thank you for having me here today. It's a pleasure. So happy to see you. I'm happy to see all of you, too. Thanks for having me. Anytime. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so I set up this experiment at the beginning of the episode, Natalie. Yeah. And do you have any information on, on what's going on, s on inside these bottles? Oh, goodness. These look pretty interesting. What did you add to each of these bottles, Kat? Can you remind me? So I added some yeast, some sugar, and some water to each. But the only difference is I added different amounts of yeast and sugar to each bottle. I added the same amount of water, but it doesn't look like the same thing's happening. Right. I think what's happening here is something called fermentation. Ooh. And fermentation is the process where we break sugar down into smaller molecules without oxygen. That's mm. the important part. So when you put the balloon on top of these bottles here, there's no oxygen coming into the system. Yeah. Is that okay? Did I hurt my yeast by making them do this without oxygen? or No. No? You actually okay. made the yeast really happy because you gave it some sugar. So it has some food to do this fermentation. Wow. But you did mention you added different amounts of yeast and sugar to each bottle, correct? Yeah, but is, is that okay? Like, I thought the same thing would happen in both, right? Absolutely. Or the same thing is going to happen, but like you were just talking about the rates of reaction, you increased the concentration, which means that in the bottle you added more to, it's going to happen faster and at a larger scale. Okay, so I think bottle number one with the blue balloon on it, I added more yeast and sugar to that one. So you're saying that because I increased the concentration of yeast and sugar, that that reaction is going to happen faster. Absolutely. And if we take a look at this bottle, I can spin it around here. It's actually produced a lot more than bottle number two. Huh. Wow. Oh, cool. Well, you know what? I think that's a really cool experiment, but I'm just a little confused. So, like, uh, are there other instances that we see fermentation happening? Do you know, Natalie? I do. There's actually a process in our bodies called lactic acid fermentation. Mm. So if you are exercising in a lack of oxygen, maybe you're really tired, your muscles are working really hard to get oxygen through your system, you might sp start producing something called lactic acid. And it's kind of uh, gives you a burning sensation when you're exercising. Oh, oh, so that's why my legs hurt when I go up the stairs. Could be. Mm. Wow. Well, cool. you know, everyone here on the show does exactly 200 uh, push-ups before the show starts just to get us into the scientific frame of mind. Yeah. Mm. Uh, all of our arms hurt really bad and we keep wondering, you know, yeah. what's going on? You know, why do I have these noodle arms? Yeah. I guess it's because of this lactic acid. So that's the burn we feel. That's the burn you feel in your muscles. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, cool. yep, to a certain extent, for sure. <laughs> thank you so much for showing me about all of these bottles here. This was fantastic. Well, thank you for coming on and explaining the science behind this and fermentation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank yes, you, let's Nat. give our My fermentation pleasure. expert a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I'll see you again sometime. We hope so. <laughs> Sounds Bye, good. Nat. Bye, Nat. Bye, see you, Natalie. All right. Awesome. Isn't Nat great? She's she great. Is. Seriously, fermentation expert, that's been my dream since I was little, so I, I really look up to her. And now we know why our arms hurt so much after doing all those push-ups before it's the true. show. Exactly. It's true. Yeah. So maybe we have to cut back. What do you say, like 100, 100 push-ups yeah. before the show? Yeah, just 100. We'll have Something to easy. get it A-OK'd by the big boss. Mm -hmm. okay. It's true. All right. Katie, you have a, you know, we've we've been talking about chemicals and reactions and all that but you know when i think chemist i think you know someone that lives maybe in transylvania you know mm. uh, in their lab whipping up chemicals and right. all that stuff mm -hmm. so do you think it's possible to even be a chemist uh, right here in saskatchewan you know what that is a great question tom and i have a wonderful example to show all of you that yes it is indeed possible to be a chemist right here in saskatchewan so let me grab my handy dandy picture frame right here and i wanted to introduce you all to dr alan east now dr east works at the university of regina which is right here in our hometown Whoa. and he is a chemist 
Specifically, he is a physical chemist. So we talked a lot about reactions and uh, catalysts today and all that good fun jazz. And this is actually what he does for a living. He does research looking into these chemical reactions and, and what sort of things will make a catalyst react faster. How can we make reactions react faster? And I think that it's a super cool job. So if any of you are interested in becoming a chemist, definitely it is a wonderful career. We'd love to answer any uh, questions about chemistry that you have. And uh, it's really great to recognize uh, the these types of people that we have in our hometowns. So thank you for that question, Tom. Yeah, it's always it's always awesome seeing some local scientists uh, get the spotlight that they deserve mm -hmm. on our show. So thank you, Katie. Uh, you know, we have a couple questions here that I think would fit perfectly for our last little segment. Yeah. Uh, it's a fan favorite. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, members of the jury, this is Ask Our Ask Scientist. Ask Woo, yeah. woohoo. So, uh, we got lots of questions that you have been sending in throughout the show, uh, and we're here to answer them. Uh, so we got one from Trevor. 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 Trevor, Trevor, Trevor. is Trevor. asking, hey, Trevor. are pickles fermented? What do you think? No, pickles are pickled. Mm. It's a, mm. it's a pr uh, pickling process process because you can pickle other things as well um, because we know pickles are actually... Huh? Cucumbers. No way. Yes. No way. But after we pickle them, we call them pickles. But you can also pickle other things like some people pick pickle eggs, some people pickle carrots. And I believe um, it's a process with salt, mm -hmm. um, vinegar, and mm -hmm. some people add herbs and spices into that as well. A little <laughs> bit of sugar, a little bit of garlic. Yeah. So is the popular game pickleball, is that pickled? No. No, that's not pickleball. Pickle ball. Pickleball? Isn't pickleball a thing? Yes, uh, pickleball is a sport. It's very fun. Yeah. But it's not pickled. No. no okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, hopefully, Trevor, that answers your question and made you a little bit hungry. Uh, all right. We got uh, a question from Orlando. Can we see the 200 push-ups right now? Uh, you know what? Uh, I'll do 100 right here. So uh, I'll just... All right, so here. Tom's going to go do the 100 push-ups. Uh, we already have to do them a lot before the show, so yeah. uh, our arms are burning right now. We're not going to go ahead and do the, the push-ups, but Tom is is going and having a lot of fun That's with right. that. We have to rest up for the next day's set of push-ups. Exactly. You can't, you can't overdo it or else, you know, you might yeah. you might cause some extra soreness or muscle damage, so you got to keep it to a minimum. I do have a question for you, though, Kat. Yeah. So uh, can we see Effie? Is she roaming around the studio or he? Um, no, Effie doesn't fit in the studio. The The ceiling on the studio is way too low to get Effie in. So Effie has to hang out outside the studio. So we can't bring Effie in, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll bring in a picture of Effie one time and we'll show you guys. 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Wow, Tom, you busted those out pretty quick. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, when you, when you do 200 a day, 100 is... Half a 200, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Got my sweat on. I uh, got lots of lactic acid going on in these bones. All right. We had more questions. <laughs> uh, all right. What are some types of catalysts? Catalysts, again, those oh. are those things that uh, speed up a reaction but don't necessarily get uh, used up in the reaction. I have a great response to this question, actually. I know one example of a catalyst, and it's actually called catalase. Oh. And this fits in really well with our show because yeast is one of the ingredients we use for our elephant's toothpaste. And yeast contains the enzyme called catalase. And this enzyme is also found in dogs, potatoes, and humans. Ah, uh, wow. you mm -hmm. know, the three things that make up 90% of all uh, living things. Exactly. There are also catalysts in our body. What? Did you know that? Yeah. So um, right now, say you had a well-balanced lunch before this. Well, all that food sitting in your stomach, um, it helps get digested by catalysts. So for example, um, lipase is a catalyst that digests fat. Mm -hmm. Then you have another catalyst called trypsin, which helps digest any protein. And then amylase helps break down any sugars mm. that might be sitting in your stomach. You know, we actually had an episode uh, a little while back where we put crackers in our mouth. 
uh, and we just let them sit there. And basically what was going on is the amylase was breaking down the cracker and it made it taste nice and sweet and delicious. So it, uh, go back to, uh, you know, let us know what episode that was. I, I forget which episode it was, but we do eat a cracker on this show. Uh, <laughs> it, it is very scientific. Uh, so thank you for your question. And thank you, Kat, for answering that question. Uh, all right. Uh, Tom's hair looks real good. I know it does. <laughs> it's on my head. Uh, all right. So, uh, Kat, this is another one for you. Yeah. What are you studying? What, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a nurse when I grow up, and I'm actually so close to being done that right now. That's exciting. Yes, it is very exciting. Um, I got to see some babies get born. That Ooh. was that was pretty cool. We got to see that, and then other times, you know, I got to go to a uh, school and hang out with kids and help, you know, do nursing student stuff with them. And then I get to go into the hospital, and you know, I take care of real people in the hospital and do things. So I have a question, Kat. I'm not uh, an, an expert in nursing whatsoever. So is there chemistry in nursing? Like, is that found in nursing, or is chemistry just chemistry and nursing is just nursing? No, it, nursing combines all different types of sciences. A, a main one that we deal with is biology, but we also deal with chemistry too, because in nursing, you have to give out medications to people and you have to understand, you know, how are you gonna mix that up sometimes and how is that going to react in the body? Or even um, sometimes they make pills that have a special coating on them so that when you take it, your stomach um, will only digest the pill and the medicine when it gets to a certain part of your stomach. Oh, yeah. cool. Very cool. Uh, thank you, Kat, for yeah. sharing. We got, uh, you know, we got a couple more. So uh, what is the difference between yeast and bacteria? Does anyone want to take that? Uh, yeast and bacteria. Well, uh, they are both living things, uh, but they are classified as different living things so mm -hmm. uh something similar to like plants are living and animals are living but we are not the same mm -hmm. and so it's kind of similar to bacteria and yeast they are both living but they're just not kind of grouped in that same category of living things yeah uh you know it's usually uh the difference between how uh, more of them are made so we have you know bacteria just like to to clone each other we call that asexual reproduction uh, and I think yeast also does that, mm. uh, but uh, they do it in a different way. I believe they do uh, binary fission. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> and you know it. Uh, we love being wrong here. We love being educated uh, by our wonderful viewers. So uh, maybe our viewers can also help us answer this uh, by letting us know what's the difference between uh, a yeast and a bacteria. And they are different. Uh, oh, also, I know the answer. Yeast are fungi. Uh, and fungi are not bacteria. They are their own separate thing, like mushrooms. So that, that's the difference between a <laughs> bacteria and a yeast. Mm -hmm. It's really the way out. things are classified. Yeah. yeah, yeah. it's a fun guy. It's a real fun guy. <laughs> uh, we got one more, uh, and it's from the legendary Hayes Brothers. Hayes oh. Brothers. The Hayes Brothers. Hello. All right, the Hayes Bros Incorporated says, uh, why does more food slash sugar for the yeast make less reaction? Hmm. More, more food slash sugar. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So reaction. with the balloons, so with the balloons, so we actually had a greater concentration in bottle one and it might be hard to see, but in bottle one with it, the increased concentration with more sugar for the yeast, it actually did create a greater reaction than less sugar did for the yeast. Mm -hmm. As we can see right there, yeah, uh, there is uh, a lot more uh, yeast product that is in uh, bottle number one compared to number two. So more sugar does mean uh, a, a greater reaction. I, I hope that cleared things up for you, uh, Hayes Brothers Incorporated. There is one other one here. Oh, what yeah. should we eat or do if our muscles are sore? It's a really good question. Uh, I think that there's kind of multiple things that you can do, but the two that come to my mind is drinking a lot of water. Mm. So it's very important whenever you're, uh, say if you're uh, going to gym class or whatever, your teacher's probably gonna remind you to drink a lot of water. It's very important to remain hydrated. Uh, at the same time, uh, you can also stretch. 
So stretching is a very, very important component uh, after you're kind of running around, playing outside or whatever you're doing. Take a few moments to stretch and I think that your muscles will start to kind of feel better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I personally like to, to have a banana. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, Post-workout? Post-workout, maybe even before workout right. to prevent cramping. That's right. You know, yeah. All that wonderful stuff. Uh, potassium is great. Uh, folate, I'm not sure if that's in bananas. But anywho. Still great. Still yeah. great. Mm -hmm. You just want to make sure that you have a good meal before you do any exercise and a good meal afterwards so that you make sure that your body is using those calories that you use from food because once it runs out of those calories, then it starts to break down muscle mass mm -hmm. versus the food that's in your digestive system. And, you know, I used to work out uh, holding my breath the entire time. And aside from passing out, <laughs> I would be so sore. Uh, so remember, the other thing is to breathe. You got to breathe or else uh, you got to breathe. You got to breathe. So I hope that that answers uh, your questions. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of fun here today on the Couch Potato Lab. We had uh, some chemical reactions. We watched, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff. We learned about a cool chemist. Uh, again, we are five days a week now. We are going to be back tomorrow uh, around the same time. So we hope that you can catch that show. Uh, the lab manual will be up. Uh, someone asked me, Tom, what color is a banana? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not orange. I'm going to tell you that. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. My name has been Tom. <laughs> uh, my name is Kat. And my name is Katie. Uh, and here is uh, a word from our wonderful supporters. So thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.